such a cultural institution. What, I mean, what does that feel like when you realize you're, I'm about to be part of not just a series, not just a piece of entertainment, but something that is really a cultural phenomenon? Do you, do you like go for a walk or do you like make a sandwich or what, what do you? How are you when you found out? Um, I was on my bed in my bedroom. <laughs> and I think I got a phone call and then I, I genuinely didn't think it was real. Like, you know how you just can't believe things sometimes and they just don't 
feel real, like you think you're in denial or something. I had that feeling wash over me. And I screamed. I was like, never, you're joking. Can you scream? Um, well, no, I was in um, a supermarket. Uh, yeah. What section? Do you remember? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think I feel like I'm repeating what it's a story I've, I've talked quite a lot, but I was in a supermarket and I literally had an avocado in my hand. And um, I got the I, one hand and the call to my agent in the other. So I got off the phone and I didn't know what to do, so I just I put it back. <laughs> and then I just left the store and I went for a walk. That looked so weird to <laughs> anyone watching me. But also, because it's so secretive and the whole audition process was really, really secretive and we had code names and you were turning up at the BBC and it, it kind of went a bit like secret operation. So I was walking down the street and I was phoning my agent like, are you serious? Is this right? You know, but like really, really paranoid, like looking over my shoulder as well, like I was being followed. Someone did you ever, did you ever that avocado and made guacamole with it? And yeah! Ate it. Did you go back for more avocado? No, I didn't. I think I just walked to the beaches. <coughs> and I remember I was in Oak Boots, and because I just nipped out, I didn't have any socks on. And I just went for a walk in Oak Boots. That's what I remember. And I phoned up my mum, and I was just like, wow. Uh, well, Haley Atwell is here at the con, and she recently was asked about appearing on Doctor Who, and she said she would like to play the Doctor. Oh, would that be good? You guys can support that? Would you make a great Doctor? I think so, too. So we get to see the Doctor Duck Smash, which needs to happen. Uh, let's go to the audience, and we, we, we can mention as well, uh, if you could resist the urge to ask for a hug or a selfie, it would be really awesome. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello! First question, hi! So, uh, hello. So, it's an honor to be asking you this, and you are such an inspiration, but what was your most memorable episode that you filmed, and why? Or how you had to, for example, play a totally different character in one of the finale episodes of season eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so awkward right now. <laughs> I love that you have an oven glove as well. That's, that's, like, that's really cool. <laughs> what was the question? I'm so sorry. <laughs> first. <laughs> the snowman was quite a special episode for me. Um, uh, and I think it's because we got to play with like going up a spiral staircase into the TARDIS on a cloud set amongst the stars. Um, and also get chased by an ice governess. And all. It just felt like a very quintessential Doctor Who episode. Um, Strax and Vastra. And um, that was the first one where I really felt I was kind of in Doctor Who and up and running, if, if that makes any sense. I really enjoyed that episode. That was the one where you had the umbrella? Yeah. There was an exchange? Yeah. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Did you have a favorite one, Karen? Me? Oh, um, my favorite know, one, so that was it. I'm sorry, that takes it. No. <laughs> um, my favorite one to be in was probably the 11th hour, just because, again, it was our first one. And, um, my little cousin was in it playing the younger version of my character and she did such a good job in introducing the character that I didn't have to do anything. So. <coughs> I think that Stephen Moffat had that one sort of in his head from when he was a little boy and he finally got to make it happen, so that was pretty cool. I like Vincent of the Doctor of yours Oh, well. really? Good choice. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Right up next, over here. Hey there, um, question bo uh, for both of you. Uh, both of you have both been in pivotal mo uh, moments for uh, the new Doctor Who. Uh, and I'm sure you guys had a lot of like a lot of support from the crowd and your fans, but also a little bit of a backlash because of the change that they, you know, yeah, change and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, what was your experience more so at that pivotal changing? Like Karen, for you being like this whole new Doctor, this whole new writer, uh, like, you know, straight from scratch, and then Jenna, you, you know, you had this whole entire setup with, um, with, you know, the pawns and everything, and then now you're in this new mopey doctor, and then Capaldi comes out. Well, when the pawns left, right? But just basically, what was, what was your guys' um, feeling about the feedback from the fans uh, when you guys were in such pivotal moments for the new Doctor Who? Um, well, for me, actually, everybody changed at the same time. 
So I sort of felt like I didn't really have to deal with it that much. I was just sort of slightly behind getting to watch the entire thing, which was actually a really sort of cool position to be in because I had all the fun without any of the responsibility. <laughs> Because you're, you're filming so much that you're kind of, and I, I think when Asylum and the Daleks came out, I was still filming at the time. So Matt was going off to New York and coming back, and he was saying it's okay, it's okay, like it, it, you know, people liked it. So I was kind of quite removed, really, from um, from it. And then I think gradually you realise, oh my goodness, it's okay. You've not you've not broken it in any way. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you guys know, you both did a fantastic job with the new Doctor Who, and you know, I'm sure everybody here is a fan, obviously. So. <laughs> Hi, Karen and Jenna. Hello. 
I'm Davey. Um, it's a bit hard for me to think of a really, really good question to ask you both, so I thought instead of the question I would ask you as a request. Um, yesterday, yesterday was my birthday, so I was wondering if you could sing me a happy birthday today. <laughs> 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 I'm, 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 Was that tough? 
to shoot him when you when you read that in the script that that's the way they were going to go with Danny. What did you think about it? I thought it was a great, you know, it's a great story, and it was. A, I think that Death in Heaven and, and Dark Water is such um, it's such a strong two parter and really really good scripts. So obviously, it's kind of um, Romeo and Juliet, kind of very. Uh, heartbreaking, but it told a really, really great story, and um, especially when we come back this series, it now leaves Clara in a place where she's free to just live her life in the TARDIS, and so we're a lot more space-bound and not Earth-bound now. Um, but, you know, I'm sure she often thinks of, of Danny in, in Cyber Heaven. <laughs> Karen, is there one for you that was particularly heartbreaking? Heartbreaking? Um, probably leaving. That's pretty heartbreaking. <laughs>
Um, my question, I actually, I asked you, Karen, yesterday, but I didn't get to ask Jenna. So my question is, well, the reason that I ask it is because um, it's just a question that people don't usually expect to be asked, but then it's such a common question. So my question that I'm asking to say, without saying the word question again, is what's your favorite, <laughs> is what's your favorite color? <laughs>
Okay, so wait, let me go back to <laughs> just cast my mind back. So she wasn't taken. And then she would have just grown up normally, I guess. Right? On the TARDIS. I mean, on the TARDIS. I mean, as normal as you can get on, on the TARDIS. <laughs> I think that would be quite an interesting upbringing for any child to be traveling through time. I have no idea what that does to a person. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, though, I think. I got good gossip. Whoa. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. This was kind of a first question before. Did you know I auditioned for Mel's? Your... Oh my god, I did know that! Oh my god! That's one of the things I've got that you didn't get, and my grandma was so upset because Thank god you did not get that! <laughs> I also thought... Because then you would have, you know... I also <laughs> thought they'd never cast us as childhood best mates because the height difference was too much. <laughs> so I decided I'm never going to get the part. It's hilarious, oh my god! Thank you. <laughs> just to have two Scottish people. Uh, I feel like that could be funny for like one episode. <laughs> I feel a bit greedy really to ask for uh, uh, more doctors. Um, but maybe um, maybe Tom Baker or something. Yeah. How would Amy Pond get on with uh, Peter Capaldi's doctor? Would they would they get along well? Would they have a different dynamic than Clara and, and Capaldi's doctor? I don't know. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see the banter. What do you think? Do you think that our characters would get on? Yeah, I do. I, I, I think do. It'd actually. be a really interesting. I, I would. I'd like to see two Scots in the TARDIS. It'd be yeah, getting all patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling through time. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I think we would get on. So I've got two questions, one for both of you and then one for your Jenna. So the first question is for both of you. So I'm a good mix of actually Scottish and English. So I was wondering like what your favorite sports were in the UK. Sports? Yeah. Mm, I really like snooker. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because some people just don't know what, what snooker is. And then I show them and they're so confused because the men wear like full suits with dicky bows. <laughs> our sport to see for the first time. <laughs> I don't I don't really watch sport really. Um, maybe sometimes rugby and I, I used to play like badminton at school. <laughs> Were you any good? Uh, I, I thought I was pretty good. Badminton and also trampolining we used to do as well. <laughs> we used to play rugby in Scotland in school. Like they made the girls play that. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor seems to be imprinting on his previous companions. Tennant was a reaction to uh, Rose's accent, and Capaldi obviously being a reaction to Amy. What do you think the next doctor would take from Clara? Oh. Hello. Oh yeah. It could be uh, somebody, you know, kind of going back to Chris Eccleston, really northern, I suppose. If, if that's if that's the way it goes. And the second aspect: What do you think Amy's first reaction would be when meeting uh, Capaldi's doctor? Realizing the Scottish. I think she would just have a face of approval. <laughs> <laughs> What's that face? What's that? It's like. It's <laughs> <laughs> very approving. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Oh, and there was one more. Oh. oh yeah, so my question is for Jenna. Uh, what was your favorite thing about filming Titanic? Oh, um, oh, oh, <laughs> we filmed a lot in a water tank, and we got to flood the sets every day, um, uh, and also, um, like, we built, like, a quarter of the actual ship, and just got to, like, move in through all of that, so that was pretty cool, um, yeah. Thank you. You 
talked about getting the part and you know feeling like a secret agent and having to be clandestine about everything. When you're when you've got the part and you're actually shooting Doctor Who in a regular in a regular season, how much secrecy is there around the set and around what what you're doing? I mean, do they take your DNA or like what, what, what happens? How how secret is it? There's just signs that say that no Twitter. <laughs> Secrecy that we don't really need to like. I mean, like, constantly remind everyone. No Twitter, though. Uh, no <laughs> Twitter. No Twitter. Okay, so my question is for both of you. With Doctor Who being so iconic and such a huge thing, it's literally gone through time and space. What has your experience been like or differed between your other roles? Because you've been in Doctor Who, but you've also both been in separate things. So what's like the experience like between the two? I don't think there's anything like Doctor Who in terms of. You know, on, on and off the job, it's just such its own thing that's so special and mad and wonderful and, you know, it's, it's kind of, I just, I really don't think there's anything else like it. Yeah, I remember um, being on the show and just getting really worried that every other job would be so boring in comparison um, because, like, it's just really fun to run away from monsters for a living. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it is. It's a thing of its own. Like nothing else is like it. Not even other sci-fi stuff that I've done, to be honest. Thank you. Hi, Ash. Uh, this question is for both of you. Um, if you could choose, what stands out in memory as like the best experience you had on set? Like what's the most amazing, memorable experience you've had as a companion? Hmm. Filming the 50th was pretty special. Just like literally saying a line and three doctors looking at you. <laughs> I think I corpsed for like the first four or five takes. I just couldn't, I, couldn't, I kind of didn't, I couldn't deal with it at all. I didn't know where to look or what to do. Um, that, that felt like quite a special experience. I'm just, I mean, can I choose a really vague answer? It's just like the laughter that was shared. It was so jokes on that set. Like, it was just constant laughter. I remember on Asylum of the Daleks, that's when I remember laughing more than I've ever laughed in my entire life. And it was at some monster <laughs> that was like, oh, in a screen. Um, and that really stands out to me. I know that's not very monumental. But... <coughs> what, what was it like getting to work with David Tennant and seeing firsthand what he brought to the doctor, getting to experience that? I was great. I mean, he's so brilliant. And actually, what was amazing was how well like Matt and David, their doctors, like really worked so well off each other. Um, uh, yeah, he's he's great. He's wonderful. Is John Hurt like funny on oh, camera? Oh, he's a dude. He is <laughs> such a dude. He is he is the coolest guy ever, and has the best voice ever. But yeah, he's pretty amazing. Hello, Starfleet. Yes, hello. Uh, this question is actually for Jenna. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors that this is supposed to be your last season for Doctor Who. Is that true? Yes, Spoilers! Spoilers! Spoilers, we did learn that Alice Kingston is going to return for the role of her song. How do you think about that? Why do you think River Song is such an important character in modern life? Because she's my daughter. Are you glad she's coming back? Yeah, Alex is brilliant. Alex is always, you know, she's, she's, she's kind of like, even though she's in and out, she's the constant in a way. Um, so she's always really looked after me when I was, you know, when I was first starting out and stuff. So it's lovely to have her around. Hey guys, um, my question was for Jenna. Uh, I just want to know, like, uh, what was your favorite, uh, most exciting moment of filming the series nine? Series nine? Yeah. This series. Ooh, ooh what can I say? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think about. Um, what I can say is. Um, I don't know why Stephen and Moffat has done this, but I, I do hang upside down a lot this series. <laughs> There's a lot of hanging upside down. And that is no easy feat, I tell you. It no, may look easy. Not. It's not easy. I remember 
remember I had to do that once and I burst all the blood vessels in my face, so there was like little red dots over my entire face. Like I had a weird disease or something. Michelle Gomez has now got a fear of upside down people. <laughs> now that's an actual legitimate fear from filming Doctor Who. She's got a fear. <laughs> Is it Vikings that hang you upside down? <laughs>
What? <laughs> Donna! Whoa! Do we, but we need a doctor! <laughs> Yeah, like a wise old man to steer the ship. <laughs> We've got a good crew together. Yeah. All right, good episode. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, I can answer the question now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is for more of Jenna. Okay. Um, sorry, you're a great assistant. <laughs> What happened? So, you know how Danny kind of killed someone and then brought him back to life? Whatever happened to him? Because you gotta get. Uh, they kind of gave a blank example of what happened to him. What do you mean? When the little boy came back? Yeah. Well, you just saw me kind of crying at him, <laughs> really, because he wasn't Danny. So, I assume that Clara has taken him back to his home. So that doesn't happen in season nine. You don't give an example where. No, <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't see him again. But Roger's gonna answer a question now after. Oh, sorry. 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 Okay. <coughs> oh, okay. You can take that. We can go over here. Yeah. Hi, ladies. Hello. Uh, such an honor to see you today. My name is Anna, and I was wondering which is the first ever episode of Doctor Who that you watch. And what was your first reaction to this? My first one that I, I sat down to watch was when I was auditioning and it was the 11th hour. And I was like, this is cool. Um, I think the first one I watched was the one with the mannequins. With Rose and Eccleston. <laughs> How you feeling, buddy? You good? Wanna do it? No? You're okay? Just pick them up. Hey! Um, who is your favorite actor to work side by side with? And for you, who is your favorite doctor? <laughs> My favorite actor from Doctor Who, or just any actor? Actor, any actor. Oh! I really like this actress called Helen McCrory. <gasps> I love her! She's so talented! And <coughs> yeah, I would just sort of like watch her and learn stuff and it was really cool. She was in Vampires of Venice, right? She was, yeah, yeah. She's, in, she's insane, she's amazing. Brilliant. Um, I love both doctors equally as much as each other. Diplomatic answer. <laughs> story which will be like an hour and a half or two hours whereas now we get 12 hours of all individual stories um, and all different places you can travel to so that's so much better um, and favorite incarnation I've watched I watched um, some of William Hartnell's very early stuff um, um, and, and I watched the first episode which I thought was pretty um, amazing and, and quite dark and um, yeah that's my choice as well. Yeah. Cool. Oh, the first one. Thank you. Hey there. Hi. 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 Hi, Jenna. Hi, Karen. It's so amazing to see you. I'm Delara, and I have two questions for both of you. Well, two questions, one's for Karen, one's one's for Karen, one's for Jenna. <laughs> So Karen, was it awkward for the doctor to be married to your daughter? <laughs> yeah, I think that was a bit awkward, actually. <coughs> I don't know how he felt, but um, I found it a little bit awkward. I think when I realized that made me a step-parent, did it? Wait, yeah, yeah. No, 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 not step-parent. Mother in law Sorry, oh my god, I'm losing my mind. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that was a pretty 
stories are a weird thing for my character to compute. Having sort of like idolized this man her whole life, but now she was suddenly the mother-in-law. I was like, what? <laughs> and the second question, Jenna, what do you think of the 12th Doctor? I love the 12th Doctor. He's my best friend. Um, well, <laughs> he, um, he is, and especially I can't wait for everyone to see what he's done in season 9 as well because Peter is just like a firecracker and um, goes off in a thousand different directions and he's very, he's quite, he's evolved a lot as well since last series so um, yeah, you've got some really good stuff to look forward to with Peter. Thank you. So we'll get to as many questions as we can. Really quickly, I, we're all noticing that a lot of the questions are coming from kids, are coming from younger people today, and obviously you have fans of all ages represented here in this room too. But why is Doctor Who such an important show, do you think, for kids? Because it's imagination. It's somebody described it to me, which I've now stolen, um, as an imagination explosion. And I love that because um, it, I think that's what it does, it really captures it and it's something I really wish that I had on television when I was a child. Um, just to really catapult you into, you know, time and space and educate you, and, but ultimately it's about adventure and friendship and, uh, and what it is to be a human, I suppose. Um, uh, so that's why I think it's good for, for everybody of all ages, really. Perfect answer. <laughs> I don't know where to go from that. I really don't. Agreed. Imagination explosion. <laughs> Imagination on steroids. <laughs> or TARDIS with a fez. Cool. Nice. Um, hi, my name's Ryan, and first of all, I'd like to say I I never imagined I'd be able to be in a situation where I'd meet either of you, let alone both of you. <laughs> and I just wanted to know. Other than the roles you played, like during your doctors, who's your favorite companion? Like, out of all of them. Donna's a favorite, but mine is actually uh, Rose. I really like Rose. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, you know, a lot of the time of writing as well. Um, and then Billy's performance, I mean, like, both of those combined just made such a great character and her relationship with the Doctor, I really loved. I really love Amy Pond. Too, I just thought the end of the hour and the whole arc of that story and meeting him as a child, I just thought um, Stephen and, and Matt and Karen did a really beautiful um, uh, telling of that story. I'm a bit embarrassed. <laughs> 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 My <blushing> bird. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Okay. Hi. If if you could switch episodes, which episode? No. If you could switch roles, <laughs> which episode would you switch? <laughs> cool. We could switch roles. Or Doctor, I love that episode. I think I did the umbrella exchange. <laughs> love that moment. <laughs> I saw loads of outtakes for that. Really? The umbrella was really hard. To, really? Yeah. Well, that's very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. Oh my god, I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> Eight. Eight. questions for both of you. Uh, my first one is um, currently, what is your favorite band or music group? I've been listening to Hosea a lot, his new album. I really like a band called Everything Everything. It's an English Woo. band. They're good. <laughs> and um, my second question for both of you is, what was your most embarrassing moment while filming Doctor Who? <laughs> Supermodel came onto the set to play the mermaid creature. 
And everyone else says, oh, there's a supermodel. And I was like, ah. And then, um, and then Matt was like, I'm going to go and talk to her. And he like assumed his cool thing. Um, and then he like strutted over. He was like, hey, Lily. Um, and then like against the light stand. And then the light stand fell over. So <laughs> It was the best thing I've ever seen. So Peter decided he was hungry and went for a walk to look for some snacks, but we're in the middle of a power station. And then just before the take, he came back and I looked at him and he was absolutely soaking wet. <laughs> and I was like, what's happened? It turns out he went for a walk by himself, found a red button, pressed it, and it was actually a shower. <laughs> But what do you like to say to the to the fans when they when they come up to you at a place like this or wherever in the world you go? Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, loving it so much because it's it's uh, I think it's a really special show. So it's amazing that that you can come to places like this and get such a lovely reaction. Um, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I reiterate all of that. And um, yeah, it's just so cool to see that people care about what you've done or are doing. Um, that is honestly the coolest feeling in the world. And um, everything that you say and everything, like you even just showing up means so much. And we notice everything, so thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. 